Hello, uh, today I'm going to tell you about our proposal for a negative capacitance topological quantum field effect transistor. I'm Michael Fuhrer, um, I'm at Monash University. Um, I'm in the ARC Center of Excellence uh, in Future Low Energy Electronics Technologies or FLEET, uh, which is a seven university center um, in Australia that has uh, uh, supported this work. Um, so the outline of the talk, I'm, what I'm going to try to uh, describe to you, um, uh, describe to you a topological insulator, starting with uh, graphene uh, plus spin orbit coupling uh, to realize the quantum spin Hall effect uh, as an example, uh, and then describe uh, the topological quantum field effect transistor that we had previously proposed. Um, this is a, an electric field effect transistor. Uh, it uses spin orbit coupling to reduce the subthreshold swing. Uh, and I'll show you experiments uh, that we've done in my lab on uh, a transition, uh, electric field control transition from topological to conventional insulator and ultra thin sodium three bismuth, which could form the basis of such a transistor. Uh, and then I'll describe the idea of the negative capacitance uh, TQ FET, uh, which uses the negative capacitance of a ferroelectric to amplify electric fields in the device. Um, that can realize a large reduction in the subthreshold swing and the potential for 10 to 100 times uh, lower switching energy compared to uh, CMOS uh, low voltage devices. Um, so to, uh, to introduce the idea of a topological insulator, I'm going to start with graphene, which is not a topological insulator uh, yet. Um, so uh, graphene is a, is a honeycomb uh, lattice of, of carbon atoms, uh, one atom thick. Uh, its band structure has been known uh, for some time, uh, worked out within type binding in 1947. Um, the bands of graphene look something like this. We have uh, conduction and valence bands uh, that meet uh, at these K points in the corners of the first muon zone. Uh, um, and if we expand in small momenta around those points, uh, graphene's uh, band structure looks like this. It's conical. Uh, the bands are linear. They're described by uh, an equation that looks like uh, the massless Dirac equation in two dimensions. So sometimes we call this a Dirac material. Uh, and you can think of graphene's electrons as, as massless. Uh, they move a constant velocity independent of their energy. Uh, or you can think of graphene as a, a zero gap semiconductor where the band gap closes to zero. Um, so when graphene was, uh, was quite new experimentally, um, uh, theorists actually looked at, uh, uh, Charlie Kane and Jean Malie looked at the perturbations possible in graphene. Um, and they found that uh, if, you, if you have a, a potential that's different on the two atoms in the unit cell, uh, this will open a band gap in graphene. Uh, and they also found that spin orbit coupling will open a band gap in graphene. Um, but these two band gaps are in some sense different. And so at the bottom, I show um, electronic structure calculations on graphene ribbons. Um, and the red and green states are uh, edge states of those ribbons. And you can see in, the, uh, in one case, they do not cross the gap. And in the other case, they do. Uh, so we now know that um, the first case is a trivial insulator, the regular insulator that we are familiar with, and the second is a topological insulator. In the topological insulator, uh, these edge states that uh, cross the gap are conducting and metallic. Uh, they live on the edge. Uh, they carry opposite spins and opposite directions on, on each edge uh, of the material. Uh, so this is what's known as the quantum spin Hall effect, or sometimes just referred to as a two-dimensional topological insulator. Um, we now know that there are 2D and 3D topological insulators. Uh, the 3D topological insulators are also insulating in the bulk, uh, and they have conducting surfaces uh, where spin and momentum are coupled. Um, in this talk, I'm going to focus on the two-dimensional topological insulator. <clears throat> Uh, experimentally, there are quite a few uh, known materials now. Uh, mercury telluride quantum wells are the first example. Uh, tungsten ditelluride monolayers, um, sodium three bismuth that I'll talk a little bit about, uh, and bismuthine um, uh, are, are some good examples. Uh, these materials can have very large uh, topological band gaps, and so um, in, in principle, uh, they can uh, function just fine for devices uh, working at room temperature. Um, okay, so uh, next I'll talk about why we want to make a transistor out of a topological material, this idea of a topological quantum field effect transistor. 
Um, so the idea is to have a, uh, um, a, a channel, which is a topological material, which conducts from source to drain, and it's controlled by a gate uh, where the voltage applied to the gate electrode will uh, induce an electric field in the channel. That electric field will transform the material's band structure from topological to conventional or vice versa. In the topological state, it would conduct along its edges uh, ballistically from source to drain, and in the conventional state, it would be insulating uh, and be turned off. Um, so why use a topological material rather than a semiconductor? Uh, this is the slide I showed before. Um, I'm going to focus on this uh, phase diagram down at the bottom. Uh, and let me blow that up. Um, so this phase diagram uh, shows that uh, two regions. There's uh, the, co the conducting region, the topological insulator, the quantum spin hall region in green, and the, and the insulating region in blue. Um, and those are shown as a function of uh, potentials that can be applied to the material. Um, and so there, there's a variety of ways one could realize a, trans, a transistor and go from the conducting to insulating uh, uh, regime. Um, in particular, if we consider um, a prototypical material such as a staggered honeycomb lattice um, of, that's monatomic, um, we can apply an electric field to that material and vary those potentials. Uh, and it turns out that the electric field actually comes in twice in the Hamiltonian. Uh, there are two terms that depend on electric field. Uh, and so in fact, uh, the electric field will take us on a, on a path through this uh, space, uh, parameter space, uh, which, is, which is not horizontal or vertical. Um, and that turns out to be an advantage. Uh, in fact, um, if we have a spin orbit coupled material, it turns out that the, the subthreshold swing uh, is smaller than it would be in the absence of spin orbit coupling. Uh, and in fact, it can be smaller than the, uh, than the thermodynamic limit of, of log 10 kTRQ, which is 60 millivolts per decade at room temperature. Um, and in, it, with strongly spin over coupled elements like bismuth, uh, it could be 50% uh, smaller. <clears throat> so that's a significant advantage uh, for using topological material uh, compared to um, a conventional uh, semiconductor or insulator. Um, so, uh, this is this kind of electric field tuned transition has been proposed in a number of materials. It's been proposed in staggered honeycombs like uh, silicene, uh, in the uh, 1T prime transition metal dichalcogenides, um, in topological direct semimetals, which I'll talk a little bit about in a minute, um, and in topological crystalline insulators um, as well. So. Um, these are the materials that, that we have worked on, particularly sodium-3 bismuth. Um, and that's a material that we can, we can grow uh, epitaxially. Um, here I'm showing uh, epitax epitaxial growth on silicon 111. Um, and this is a STM image of monolayer and bilayer uh, sodium-3 bismuth on silicon 111. Um, monolayer shown in the dark purple, a bilayer is a grayish purple. Um, and we can use the scanning tunneling microscope to, uh, to analyze the band structure of this material. So the, um, here I'm showing you um, a scanning tunneling spectroscopy, which measures the density of states as a function of energy. And we see a large band gap of um, around 300 millivolts where we have zero density of states. Uh, so the band gap is much greater than room temperature in this material, and it is uh, topological. Um, we can also use the electric field to vary the electric, or oh, sorry, we can also use the tip to vary the electric field in the material. There's a built-in electric field uh, due to the work function difference between tip and sample. And so varying tip distance actually varies electric field. And as we bring the tip closer to the sample, we can see that the band gap that we imaged um, spectroscopically closes down and reopens again. Uh, I can show that um, uh, here with these uh, dashed red lines, you can see the band gap closing down to zero and then reopening. So we can uh, uh, plot a phase diagram of that band gap versus electric field. Um, and it turns out in monolayer and bilayer uh, sodium-3 bismuth, we can close and reopen the band gap. Um, it starts out topological and, and turns into a conventional insulator. Uh, the critical electric field is about a volt per nanometer, which is a experimentally achievable field in, in devices. 
Um, and the insets here show uh, the um, density func functional theory calculations uh, for, um, for the uh, zero electric field and high electric field states. And the, the yellow lines are the, the edge states. And so you can see that the high field state uh, indeed is a trivial insulator. Um, OK, so now I want to tell you um, this is really the new part of this work, um, uh, the idea of using negative capacitance uh, to enhance this kind of device. Um, the idea of using negative capacitance in a transistor has been around for some time, um, um, first proposed by Salahud and, and Dada in this paper. Um, and the idea is to use a ferroelectric as an effective negative capacitor in series with a positive capacitor of the, of the channel of a, of a FET um, <clears throat> to realize an effective capacitance, which is uh, not hysteretic, uh, but amplifies the electric field in the channel. Um, the problem with the negative capacitance FET, or one problem with the negative capacitance, is that um, uh, it's an electric field amplifier, but in a well-designed MOSFET, meaning a MOSFET where the, uh, the gate uh, is, is capacitively coupled perfectly to the channel and there's no stray capacitance, uh, then the electric field is, is zero in the subthreshold reg uh, regime. Uh, and so the, the, there, there are few gains to be made from, from using negative capacitance if the FED is already well designed. Um, but the topological quantum field effect transistor uses electric field um, uh, to switch. And so, so it actually can benefit from negative capacitance. Um, so the idea is to sandwich this topological material between two ferroelectrics, um, design them such, as the, such that the, the net capacitance is, is positive, um, but the um, but a, a opposite voltages applied to the top and bottom gates would uh, cause an electric field to be amplified uh, in the channel, and so switch at lower gate voltage than, than otherwise. Um, so that device, as I just showed you, requires two gate voltages, which is a, uh, a drawback, um, but it, it can be made to require only one gate voltage applied to one gate uh, with the other gate grounded. Uh, that requires uh, limiting only one channel, one carrier type to transit the device. And so that can be done uh, by connecting it to a semiconductor for the leads so that it injects um, only electrons or only holes. Uh, and you can have a unipolar device in, in that sense. Um, so uh, to model this device, we wanted to compare it to a, a benchmark. And so we um, compared it to uh, a gate all around that benchmark uh, from the literature, sort of representing a uh, CMOS low voltage device uh, that switches uh, at a gate voltage of 0.3 volts um, with a very low switching energy of 3.6 attajoules. Um, <clears throat> and first, uh, to compare to this, um, I, I first want to compare to a non-topological material, bilayer graphene, which, has a, which is non-topological, but has a tunable band gap. Um, and so this is known the, the band gap in graphene varies with electric field uh, and has been measured and can be tuned up to 250 millivolts, which is similar to the, the um, gate all around FET that I, I just showed in terms of the change in band gap for on off um, uh, operation. Um, and indeed, if, uh, if one uh, can sandwich bilayer graphene between uh, a suitable ferroelectric such as lanthanum doped uh, hafnia, um, one can achieve band gap modulation uh, um, of similar magnitude um, as CMOS LV, uh, but uh, in terms of making a barrier, the barrier height in the, in the CMOS transistor, uh, but at a lower voltage, um, the switching energy is, is actually still comparable because the capacitance is, is a bit higher in this device. Um, but we can turn to the topological material. Uh, so here um, uh, we're using bismuthine for the topological material. Um, in this case, we're assuming that we have the similar capacitance to bilayer graphene. And we assume that um, the spin orbit coupling gives us a reduction in the subthreshold swing. Um, in this case, we can reduce uh, the operating voltage uh, by a factor of 10 uh, compared to a CMOS low voltage. Uh, and the switching energy is almost a factor of 10 lower. Uh, so it's, it's quite a dramatic uh, gain for a similar size device. Um, and you can imagine that if you use a ferroelectric with a, with a higher remnant polarization, 
uh, such as bismuth ferrite, um, you could you could switch at much much lower voltages. I, I'm not sure that this is realistic. I think it requires a very delicate balancing of the capacitances of the two materials, which is probably not achievable. But it shows that uh, in principle, this scheme can can achieve very low switching voltages. Um, so one problem is that we we don't have experimentally the material that we need uh, to realize the topological channel, um, but there are materials uh, out there um, that are predicted that, that could work. Um, we need a, a buckled honeycomb lattice um, with strong spin orbit coupling, so we need heavy elements. Uh, we need band gaps that are at the uh, K and K prime points, so at the corners of the Briolone zone. And uh, there are candidates. Um, the 2D exenes will work, silicene, germanine, stannine, uh, but spin over coupling is fairly small in those materials, so the gains are, are moderate. Um, they, they actually can, can probably beat CMOS uh, low voltage, but um, not, not by orders of magnitude. Um, functionalized bismuthine looks very good, uh, has very strong spin over coupling, and again, can achieve these really big gains, uh, but this material has not been synthesized and characterized yet. Um, but this, I think, is points in the direction that we should we should look. Um, so this is a remaining challenge that we we need to uh, figure out the best materials to to, to realize this kind of device, uh, and and make those materials. Um, so to conclude, um, I've shown you um, a, the topological quantum field effect transistor. This is published uh, uh, here in Nano Letters. Um, where Rashba spin over coupling uh, acts to reduce a subthreshold swing compared to a conventional transistor. Um, and coupling that device to a negative capacitor uh, using a ferroelectric uh, can amplify the electric field and drastically reduce the operating voltage and the switching energy uh, in such a device. Um, uh, so I've listed my collaborators again. I'll remind you that I'm uh, from the uh, Fleet Center of Excellence, and uh, you can visit us at fleet.org.au to find out more. Uh, and thank you uh, for your attention.